Esto es El Salvador Fan Club, transmitiendo para el mundo. Hola amigos del Salvador Fan Club, ¿cómo están? Gracias por estar en un nuevo video con nosotros. En esta ocasión tenemos un video muy especial porque vamos a platicar con Michael Finley, canadiense, el técnico de Grenada, para platicar de este partido de Liga de Naciones de CONCACAF que va a ser en el Cuscatlán. Eh, así que bueno, vamos a presentarlo. Hi coach, how are you doing? Buenos días. Primero, uh, lo siento, hablo solo un poco, so inglés uh, muy bien. So, so, English uh, is the option. Sí, 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 gracias. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, totally. Very excited. Thank you for, for giving us not your time. Problem. Not a problem. Okay, then, what are your expectations about this game between La Selecta and the Spice Boys of Grenada? Well, I, I think first and foremost, um, um, you know, the Nations League is, has been created to, to uh, develop matches that mean something, you know, that have, have uh, an objective. Uh, you know, as you know, CONCACAF has, has evolved now where before it was, was built around friendlies and, and exhibition games that really at the end of the day um, were not really helping building program because it was not creating a competitive environment mm -hmm. and it was not giving each of the member associations an objective. So So the, 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 the optimism within the region for me is the fact that this team now is going to play against El Salvador and it means something. Uh, it, it puts us in a position to compete for qualification uh, for the Gold Cup, as you know, in 2023. Um, and uh, my hope is that it is a part of the, the process of building our program in Grenada. Uh, we are in a, in a, a long-term plan at this moment in time uh, that began when, uh, when I arrived. Uh, previously, there were successes in terms of getting Grenada into League A and also the Gold Cup last year. Um, and, and so we're trying to build a, a strategic plan technically for this national team uh, to, to progress over the next number of years. So playing El Salvador uh, is a very important part of that. Okay, Mr. Friendly, last game in El Salvador, Grenada took home to zero. What could make a difference in this game? Yes, two different teams. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the changes that have happened in El Salvador with Hugo coming on board, I think it's a much different El Salvadorian uh, equipo. Um, uh, the, I think they have a different mentality to their game under Hugo. Uh, you can see that um, that El Salvador is also in a process of evaluating their future. Uh, you can see how he's rotating the squad, uh, experimental uh, with players in different positions, formations. He's getting to play matches, which is great. The Panama match, the Guatemala match. Uh, Those were all good experiences for them. So um, for us, it, it, it's about uh, understanding who we are uh, and what we're capable of doing. Um, uh, we are a group that, as I say, is, is building a culture within, within the program. And we are also slowly developing our own um, uh, uh, manner of play, uh, what I call the game model. Um, so uh, it, it's going to be an interesting uh, period of time and playing In El Salvador first, um, it's important for us to to be organized uh, and and to be aware of of uh, you know what our our deficiencies are, but what we can do well while we're on the road. Coach, and how is that game model of Grenada? And if you can talk uh, a little bit about where the players come from yes. to to Grenada. Yeah, I, I mean, um, what was obvious when I when I accepted the position uh, is that there's great talent um, that exists in Grenada on the island itself. January uh, 21, right? Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, there's great talent, um, a lot of young talent. Um, but what it needs is it needs to be organized, uh, it needs to be educated, um, and it needs to be put into the best possible environments. So um, what we have done is we've, we've combined our domestic-based players on island with players who, for example, exist in the United States of America, uh, mostly playing in the USL, and then our United Kingdom-based players who are players who, who are Grenadian by birthright, their, their parents or their grandparents, as you well know, Uh, in this, in the CONCACAF region, there's a lot of, uh, um, you know, um, sort of nationalistic uh, connections, but they're living elsewhere. Uh, mm -hmm. El Salvador is actually uh, traveling that road too. Yes, yeah, so, you know, I can see that with the, the, the work that Hugo and his staff is doing with the experiments with the U.S.-based young players of El Salvadorian background. It, it's, a, it's a natural uh, process, and if people don't think that national teams are going to take advantage of that, I think that the, they, they don't understand what the global game is today. They're in the past. Exactly. Exactly. Very right. Much so. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about the the league in Grenada. Can you tell us something about Grenada Football Professional League? Yeah. 
Uh, unfortunately, the league in Grenada is not a professional league. Um, it's an amateur-based league. Um, it is. It is uh, been a league that's been around for a number of years. Uh, they have some very recognized clubs within the region, but that's one of the great challenges for Grenada. We, uh, we need to raise the standards of their domestic league, um, go towards what we what you would call a standard-based league, professional. Um, so the players that are, are there, uh, the ones that I mentioned that I think have great talent, we'd like to see being exported into other environments until they can build a league up. It's the, that is probably the greatest challenge for Grenadian football is to establish a much more uh, recognized, standard-based, and whether it becomes semi-professional first and then professional, but the league must, must evolve. And are they in that role? I think so. It's hard. Um, it, it's difficult. Uh, you know, you know that building a professional league uh, is very difficult financially, uh, and uh, the Caribbean is a, a very different environment because of the distances you must travel. Um, I, I've spent a lot of time in, in Canada uh, um, since I left the national team in Canada. I worked specifically in the Canadian Premier League in the building of the Canadian Premier League, and it is not an easy road to take. So uh, the Caribbean and Grenada itself. Um, has to go on that road, but they have to be patient. Coach, obviously in a team, every player is important, mm -hmm. but uh, there are some of the players that are key. See. Which ones of Grenada are key? And the names? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it's interesting because we have a very mixed group. Um, and what I mean by that is we have a, a, we worked very hard at trying to uh, lower the average age of our, our group. You know, as we know, if you look at the data that you're provided in today's football world, we know where the players must begin in the rotation to, to be competitive in these events. And we know where they need to be at the event. So we're trying to drive our age down. So uh, I would key on a lot of our younger players um, that have, have shown great promise. Um, the Benjamin Etienne's of the world, who, who just recently came off the island of Grenada to go play uh, with Charleston Battery in the USL. Mm. Uh, a teammate of his, AJ Patterson, who's a veteran of the USL with Charleston Battery. Um, and then you look at some of the veterans, such as Jamal Charles, who is a Grenadian-based player, but also has, has recently uh, returned to Honduras to play in the Honduran League. Mm -hmm. um, some of our key players, unfortunately, are not available to us uh, due to injury uh, and due to travel restrictions. Like who? And, uh, Reagan Charles Cook, for example. Uh, Reagan Charles Cook plays for Ross County in the Scottish Premier League. Um, and uh, he, he was player of the year there, top scorer of the year. Um, Oliver Norburn, who plays at Peterborough United, unfortunately was injured in our last international in Europe. Um, so Omar Beckles, who plays uh, in the, in the uh, League Two in the UK. So those are players, unfortunately, that are not available to us. But the, 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 the good news for us is we've spent a long time to expand our, our squad. Before it was very tight. Now we've looked at a lot of the younger players that, that are available to be seen. Okay. Um, and so those types of players uh, are be able to step in and fill these areas. Romar Franks, who, who is a Grenadian bass player. Quasim Theodore, a Grenadian bass player. Uh, those types of players. But, you know, th that's why I keep naming names, but that's the benefit of having a larger squad. We're not relying on one or two players alone. We're, we're relying on the collective at this moment in time. Okay. And that's what we're building on. All right. Mr. Finley, uh, can you tell us uh, one fortress and one weakness about from your team? I swear we're not going to, to, to tell Hugo Perez. <laughs> <laughs> He's Hugo, not buying Hugo, it. Hugo's in the other room. Waiting <laughs> to... no. uh, uh, I, I think I think that you know weaknesses for me are interesting because we all have challenges all the time. Uh, I think from an overall Grenada point of view, uh, it is it is our ability to to display consistency. We don't get a lot of time together. Um, we have a, a growing, a younger squad. We have some players that are in better environments than others. Not by, not by their choice, it's just a reality that you have to deal with within this region. So consistency is, is one of our issues. We can, we've had uh, opportunity over the last couple of months to play international matches in January in Florida against MLS teams and then we went to Europe to experience for the first time ever for Grenada, uh, UEFA and, and playing in that, in that region. Um, and what you saw was as you saw some great moments of football, some lovely passages of play of football, but then you saw some great challenges. And that comes down to the consistency and having an, an environment that we control all the time. Um, 
probably our best p uh, piece is is I think their their will to win, uh, their will to want to compete. They want to be better. Uh, we want them to be better, and that is a, that's a fire inside them, uh, and they're wanting to gain respect within the region. Um, as we all know, at times Caribbean teams uh, don't come with a lot of respect um, because they don't get the opportunity to spend a lot of time together. So this group of players, I, I have a great amount of respect for that they want to compete and they want to fight. And talking about uh, and talking about that, what are your goals in this League A from the Nations League? Well, our, our goals is very clear. We want to qualify. Uh, and let's let's be perfectly frank. Uh, the opportunity to qualify will come in the next two games against El Salvador. No disrespect to El Salvador, and no no you know uh, 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 you know um, raising the the whole American the thing. But we're dealing with completely two different entities here. It's uh, a reality. It's yeah. a reality. United States. It's yes. On and, the top. And so so we understand that. That doesn't mean that uh, you know uh, uh, groups can't compete against that. But it's but you have to be realistic and understand that if we are going to Uh, look to to position ourselves in in the second position, which we need to do. It's going to be against El Salvador. So, and I, I'm sure Hugo is, is thinking similarly. Even though he's he, you know he's the number seventh ranked team in Concacaf, he's a little bit closer to the number two ranked team in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, a we're down in 20. So there's your realities you're dealing with. But we we've come here and we'll go back to Grenada with with the idea and the emphasis on getting the results we need qualify for next year's gold cup okay. if we if we don't think that way then we shouldn't be here totally yeah so. coach what do you know about the salvador's key players which names can you tell us well it's interesting i mean when we evaluate all of the teams we play there's always going to be some uh, key players yeah. involved and as i just briefly said i think what hugo has done with his staff is he's he is also in a very transitional period i think he's looking to the future he's trying to do his as they say due diligence on all of the players he's trying to get a good idea of exactly who his who his future is going to be but he doesn't want to eliminate quality veteran players that have produced for El Salvador. Um, I think the consistency factor you see uh, Soren in midfield from Houston, when he plays you're a different team. Uh, I think you can see that the, the, the uh, Lan Vandera plays, Tomacas plays, uh, Rodriguez plays, um, uh, Rodriguez, Rias, Rodriguez, uh, center back. Ronald. Uh, ah, Ronald Rodriguez uh, and Tulsa FC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, You, those are the ones that I think you see, you watch, there's some consistency there. But then you've got Riaz on the outside and you have a number of players that he's rotated in. Um, you know, you, you can't turn away from the fact that the, the central core of the team looks very uh, balanced and very consistent, you know. Okay. Um, but he's dropping different players into different places and he's also rotating his, his formations. Coach, and what do you think about two players of the MLS are not available for El Salvador. I'm talking about Eric Zabaleta yes. and uh, Alex Rodin. Me? I don't know. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. No, no disrespect against the players or anything, but no, I mean, that's it's like us. Let me let me prefer Hugo. Hugo should be very pleased that, that Reagan Charles Cook and Oliver Norburn are not here. Yeah. Okay, these are, these are extremely valuable players to us. So he's feeling the same pain I'm feeling. And so we'll both sort of benefit from that, but it's you know the reality. Uh, what did you want uh, for for Grenada's football in ten years? In ten years? In ten yes. years? I like ten years. Uh, no, I, I think I think we have to be uh, realistic in terms of how we strategically look at the the building. Look, look, I'm a professional football coach. You know, uh, I, tomorrow. I may not be here, you know, I, we all live that world, but we still have to have a vision for the game and a vision for the country and a vision for the program. Uh, I would like to see Grenada in 2030 competing, s significantly competing for a tournament such as Gold Cup and World Cup qualifying. Uh, we have a great opportunity, I think, between now and 2026 to raise our rankings so it puts us in a better position when, they, when, when we roll out. And when we do that, that means we have to do well in things like the Nations League, the Gold Cup in 2023. But uh, we're looking for a, a, a squad that is that is going to work its way through to hopefully a qualification in 2030, if we're being realistic. And this is when we have to do it now. 
we have to do it now because that's how long these programs take. I worked in Canada for a number of years and was 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 a part of a very very good team of people uh, who were the arch architects behind what is happening in Canada now uh, in terms of uh, player acquisitions, evaluations, mm -hmm. trying to raise standards, the na you know nationalization program, bringing players in. It, you know, when you're in the position that I'm in, you sometimes don't see the fruit being picked and and the wine being drank, right? So, but it took a very long time to get them to that position. Grenada is no different. El Salvador is no different, even yeah. though El Salvador has always sat in that sort of six to ten sort of ranking area. Coach, past years, our main coach was the Mexican Carlos de los yes. Cobos, and he had his style, his yes. way to understand soccer, yes. football. Yes. And now we have Hugo Perez. What do you expect about that change? Um, I, I, I guess I see what I see in Hugo is I just, when I watch them play, they, the, the team looks to have a different mentality, a different energy level. In which way? Um, in, in more, more in, a, in, a, in a, um, a front foot mentality, you know, like they want to be the protagonists of the game. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I see. That's your feeling? That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. and I, but what you also see is you see, a, 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 as I say, he's going through a group of players. You, when you track the amount of players since Hugo's come in, that's come into this world, there's quite a few players. It's a lot. It's a lot of players. Mm -hmm. So you know what he's doing. You know, he is trying to find what, his, his, what we'll call his A team is and what his B team is and where that transition point is. Uh, and I think he, I think he also is bringing uh, to the group uh, probably a, a change in, in in the mentality as it relates to uh, not representing El Salvador. But uh, I know that there's been challenges in El Salvador before uh, with the team, with the, with the federation, and and the things that go along politically in football, mm -hmm. and that has an effect on players. And I think what he's trying to do is probably remove them from that and try and get them to think about about just being better footballers all right you know, and being and being a a, a a real positive influence that's what focused. I, mm -hmm. i want to ask about the other rival uh, for from grenada united states united states how how do you how do you expect that that game yeah we're gonna we're gonna hammer them five nil <laughs> <laughs> um, no i mean it's difficult i mean The reality you just said. The reality is not just financial. Uh, it is. It is programming. It is uh, the numbers of players. Uh, it is the beast that the United States is as a sporting entity. They expect to win every day, um, and you want to emulate that. When we go to play them, we have to we have to focus on what we need to do, and that is to use it as a learning experience for our players. We have to use it as an experiential opportunity for them to understand what players of that magnitude look like and how they perform and how they address a game such as this. So this is really for us uh, an experiential situation, and 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 it's a real opportunity also to expose our players to other people, because I firmly believe we have a number of players in the squad that should be playing in other avenues, whether that be in Central America, whether that be in the United States or somewhere else in the world. There is talent and it's talent that is not being seen and it's not being benefited by other teams. This is a platform for these players to, to, to perform. But one thing I can tell you is, I, uh, we will go and we will uh, compete because that's what football is about. We will go and fight because that's what the expectation is about. And we will go to find respect because that's what we have to do to represent Grenada accordingly. Well, hopefully we don't see too much talent on the style of Cuscatlan, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, not too much. Not too much. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, we appreciate this conversation very much, Coach. Thank you for having us. And uh, it was quite a pleasure. No, I, I really appreciate taking the time. We always love to talk football, and uh, and I thank you for for giving me that opportunity. Okay, amigos, esta ha sido la conversación con el coach Finley, Michael Finley, canadiense a cargo de la selección de Grenada, los Spice Boys. Déjenos sus comentarios. No se les olvide suscribirse y nos encontramos en un próximo video.